Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Trocious. You can also call me Jake. And today we've got another video going over several OPO7 deck lists that I've seen as I almost obsessively scroll through Twitter. If you didn't see our last video about OPO7 lists, there are a lot of really cool lists coming in OPO7 that I think you might wanna have on your radar, especially lists that you may see that you're like, oh, you know what? Maybe I wanna build that in the future. I look so you don't have to. Now, before we get into the first list, I will say that we are, oh my God, so close to three thousand subscribers so if you want to see more deck lists and more videos we've got a ton of commentary videos that you can learn about different formats different decks make sure to please subscribe for more but enough of the shilling let's first talk about the foxy pirates deck so this is a leader that i think a lot of people are skeptical skeptic skept skeptile skept skeptical about and i'm not going to sit here and say that it's the best leader of the set and you should immediately play this and enter in nationals and worlds and blah, 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 blah. but overall it looks like a really fun leader this is a list specifically from chami over on twitter and in case you don't remember foxy is a purple foxy pirates type leader five life when attacking at five thousand power dawn minus three if you have three or more foxy pirate type characters in play choose up to one of your opponent's leader and one of your opponent's characters and they do not become active during the refresh phase basically you get to freeze two different characters now i believe when i originally did my tier list i was like wait a minute you can only do one like that's probably not very good but two is higher than one so let's check out this list that we got here so it's actually really really hard to find foxy gameplay on like youtube and stuff i feel like everybody's been having so much fun with like bonnie and vegapunk and uh boa but this deck list specifically has a really interesting mix of ramping dawn but also if you're behind dawn dawn there's a handful of familiar characters in those less or equal to situations like the tony tony chopper blocker the gina 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 i'm not there yet in the anime and then also the sanji one of my favorite opo7 cards there's also several just straight up ramp cards you've got the seven cost foxy that has that activate main add one dawn from your dawn deck and rest it as well as the animal foxy pirate manda activate main trash the character get a dawn from your dawn deck and rest it this deck has a really really interesting mix of these two ideas and concepts because with the you know getting a head part i'm thinking like the ito mimizu which literally the the ramping is activate main on a three cost that's pretty good and you just don't have to have another one on field like that's pretty easy you really aggressively put yourself in situations where you can throw down that seven cost foxy but also the familiar nine cost kaido yes that nine cost kaido wanted poster that we're all familiar with that gains rush is a really really strong card to ramp up to and then go ahead and use things like Sanji right for cheaper because more than likely you'll be lower than your opponent if you don't get Kaido because it's not really searchable in a specific list like this since it is Animal Kingdom in a Foxy Pirates deck you've got other ways to put yourself down in Dawn with that leader effect and you have a couple events in this list including the Nora Nora Beam and also the Megadon Ninetales Rush another option for that activate main if you're equal or less in dawn you actually get to set up one of your foxy as active and that doesn't like differentiate between the leader which by the way if you swing with your leader and dawn minus three then use that activate main to restand your leader you can use that when attacking again is it worth it probably not but i think it's an interesting point now this next one that i'm going to show you is a green blue zoro sanji and i'm super excited about this deck because the starter deck for this leader is coming out very soon in english i was originally going to show you this leader in this video but then all of a sudden it won an event in japan which that's kind of cool there's a lot of boosts for this deck and one thing that you'll see in a lot of different deck lists of this is that these boosts are because this deck 
is not a straw head deck like you would maybe think. It is a pure seven warlords of the sea type deck. Obviously playing that Dracul Mihawk that also comes in that starter deck plays a ton of different cards coming out in OPO7, including the Sengoku that looks for seven Warlords of the Seas characters, the Jinbei, Don Quixote, Doflamingo, Trafalgar Law, Jinbei, Edward Weevil, Crocodile, as well as several other familiar faces in the EBO1, Edward Weevil, the Gecko Moira from the starter deck, and also some OPO1 cards in the Double Attack Gecko Moira, which if you didn't see in my TV, TCG market video like cards to buy before OPO7. I literally said buy those two cards, and this is kind of the reason why. Because now there's multiple decks playing this combo. And also the blocker Boa Hancock, which I also mentioned in that video. So subscribe if you want more good advice the idea of this deck with the dawn times one when attacking once per turn you may return one of your characters with a cost of two or more to the owner's hand set up to one of your characters with seven thousand or power less as active this deck overall doesn't play anything with a base power of 7,000 or less. So every single time you are going to be able to use this effect and swing again with a character, whether it's that blocker Boa Hancock that has that times one when attacking, if you have five or less cards in hand, draw one card, or maybe something like the Gecko Moria, which I keep saying, you should get this card. If you have five or more cards in your hand, gain double attack and because you are going to with your leader effect get a character back in your hand right because you have the sengokus that are those searchers you have also the buckins that can play down those weevils that's actually a plus one card in the hand so it gives you plenty of more advantages to be able to swing double attack twice we know how good double attack is this deck is really really cool and honestly seeing it compiled and put together i definitely will admit that i undervalued Zoro and Sanji and I'm really really excited to see if more people pick up on this and more people play this deck man cost four or less with the Mihawk slash characters that's both of the weevils that's the Trafalgar law is that anybody else that's not anybody else but still like that's a pretty good amount of characters right there i'm excited but one deck that i know that many of you are excited for you let me know down in the youtube comments is a blue green sanji a leader that has been literally obsolete i actually have to look up what this leader says what is this opo2 OPO 1. For life, 5,000 power straw hat crew. Once per turn, when you play a character without an effect from your hand, if you have three or less characters in place, set up to two of your dawn as active. So if you look at this list right here, that makes a lot of sense. There are so many vanilla characters in this list, but not only vanilla characters in this list, other ways to play vanilla characters outside of just stuff from your hand. With the Dracul Mihawk again that we're going to talk about, going to be able to play that film Zorro that we've seen. A Fortrix, which is a slash character, and also this Edward Weevil from ST03. Those are just characters that you can put down to proc your leader effect and get two Dawn back as active, and especially with counter power like Onigiri, right? This doesn't say like your turn or opponent's turn. This says once per turn. So even with Onigiri, when you play that down, you can put two more Dawn back on active to use Pump Gibson. You can use Love Love Mellow to draw a card. This deck's so cool, especially with all the vanillas outside of the, uh, you know, the secret rare uh, Zoro right there, and maybe the Ezos. This deck is actually going to be like relatively cheap, to be honest, and I'm so excited to get into this once OPO7 comes out. I mean, look at this. You've got Peronas that are vanillas. You've got the Fortrix. You've got whatever the frick this thing is i don't even know what it is the weevil is also vanilla like literally 12 different vanilla characters no fifth 16 16 vanilla characters in this list to be able to proc that effect i'm just so excited about this this is also from clover over on twitter 
didn't want to forget about that shout out. I usually give out the shout outs. We'll go a little bit more serious now, as probably some of you are curious. We'll go with Green Yellow Yamato. This is from Koki Blog over on Twitter. And this is not too much different, I would say, than a lot of the Yamato lists that we've seen. One of the things that this list specifically does not do, though, is play the Hody Jones. The Hody Jones, an excellent, excellent option. And what I consider to be like, Pretty much a staple is not in this list now on one piece top decks you can go there and you can see that some of the winning lists do have the hody jones but i wanted to show you this one because this one is a little bit different kind of the flexibility because honestly the ones on one piece top decks although they're really really good deck list they're like literally the same thing as in like opio 6 and stuff so like i want to show you something a little bit more refreshing this yamato playing that ryuma in opo 6 that we saw is super super strong in Perona, but also playing the new Otama. The Otama, a really, really nice searcher for Land of Wano cards. So with the Momonosuke's on both the the small kid and the, the big kid with also your usual nine drop Yamato. You got your Okikus, your Hiori's, Izos, Neko Mamushi. You're playing several really, really good cards. Now, this list is playing Reject and... Well, that card's getting banned. <laughs> so just kind of replace that card with something of your choosing. I'm sure it's still a really good deck. You could play like the zero cost. You're the one that should disappear because I know that's very popular in Yamato list and also just yellow in general. But another thing as well, we mentioned that in list the 10 drop ace the yellow 10 drop ace with rush is going to be a very 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 good card in anel and also in yamato this list is pretty sick in my opinion i'm excited to play some yamato we'll see how long that lasts though before i get annoyed the last one that i'm going to show you from op07 is zoro now if you want to get into the one piece trading card game i've had a couple people ask me this in like youtube comments and stuff zoro is actually probably one of the cheaper decks that you can buy and get into the game and one of the reasons that i specifically wanted to mention the op07 version of zoro is that you look at this list there's no unblockable Luffy's in this list. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't remember the last time that I saw a Zoro list that did not have unblockable Luffy's in it. There's also a list on One Piece top decks that has a non-Rush Luffy list, but it's really, really interesting now to see this evolution through EBO1, through OPO7, move away from what a lot of people would consider to be a strong card, but maybe not necessarily Dawn efficient in some of these situations like Zoro could today in Kinotsuchi. Hopefully I said your name correctly. I'm still learning katakana and hiragana but anyways looking at this list obviously you're playing that rush zoro in the typical zoro package that you would see a lot of these one drops in the magura the nami the robin the makino buggy as well with those curly dadan specifically the old curly dadan because actually even though they made a new curly dadan that was pretty much the same thing but more nerfed they didn't ban the old curly dadan which is actually really shocking and i'm surprised nobody's talked about that and i just realized that myself but a card that is played that i mentioned that i thought was actually going to be really interesting in stuff like zoro and these red deck list is the Dogura and Magura. This is one of those characters that says on play, give up to one of your red one cost characters, double attack during the turn. So especially after you power up a one cost character like Buggy with Magura or Makino, you can then use Dogura and Magura to give it double attack as well. You've got the Robins in there to pop. You've got the Diablo Jambes in there to make maybe your Nami. Maybe you're swinging with the Nami instead of the Buggy in that combo like I was mentioning to use Diablo Jambe. You've even got that King Kong Gatling film card uh, two cost event on main get up to one of your leader characters plus 3000 power then if your opponent has a 7000 power or more give up to one of your opponents or leaders characters plus 1000 power for the turn effectively late game giving a character plus 4000 
pretty pretty crazy also my favorite card in ebo one killer and kid love that guy again Zoro is probably going to be your cheapest option for a deck for a while. I think the most expensive card in here is Radical Beam, which is like a $4 card because this SR Zoro got reprinted and uh, remade in a different deck. And so like it's really, really cheap. And also, in my opinion, Zoro is like relatively easy to pick up and learn if you've never played One Piece before. So, yeah. I like Zoro a lot. And that's it. That's all the deck lists that I'm going to showcase on this video. I'll definitely show more in the future. I think some of the other ones that I have in the bank that we can showcase and let me know if you want to see them is Trafalgar Law, the red green Trafalgar Law. We got Black Smoker, which you may be interested since Sakazuki is going to get banned. I see Nami's in here, uh, some Luchi, some black yellow Big Moms as well, and some starter deck Linlins with Vega. Mega Punk and some Blue Crocodile as well, and even some Iceberg. <laughs> Oh, here's another uh, green blue Sanji deck that I saw from Pironko Gift on Twitter that you can see. This is a much, much different build in my opinion, but still has some like vanilla characters that you can play with the Sanji. The only thing that's the same is, oh my gosh, the only thing that's the same is like the Weevils and the Ezos. <laughs> But anyways, a different way to play this list if you'd rather play it this way. But yeah, again, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want more deck lists in those videos. I constantly save deck lists on Twitter. So you just, you know, you just keep letting me know and make sure to subscribe for more. That's it, I guess. I'm so, I've been, I built a blue doflamingo deck for opo5 like the very end of opo5 i'm getting ready for seven warlords play